Okay, in this part of the episode, I'm going to show you how to export objects uh, from Unreal into O3D. And so I've picked up kind of a packet he package here um, in Unreal. And uh, my suggestion, make sure that when you're looking at packages that they are not the Unreal-only content, as those can only be used in Unreal. But a lot of the third-party created ones uh, can actually allow you to work outside of it. So I will go ahead and kind of create a project here in Unreal, and I'm going to kind of load up a sample scene, grab a couple pieces here, and uh, we'll go ahead and export some of these objects out so that you can see uh, how it's done. So let's kind of go into, uh, let's see, we've got all my libraries, let me go to my uh, Unreal Engine and launch my engine. All right. So once we get a hold of where we start here, we should be able to take a look and see what projects I have ready to go. Uh, in this case, I'm using 5.1.0. You can do this with the 4 Series as well. I've got a few projects I've done in here. I'm going to load up uh, City, City Park Environment. And we'll just kind of go through here. Now, as you remember from the last episode that I did, uh, I was showing how to do this with FBX. Uh, and uh, GLTF. You can also do this with OBJ uh, and a few other formats that can be found in the uh, AssInp library. And so <clears throat> if you're curious kind of what formats uh, that are supported on there, go and check out the project. Uh, you'll be able to see all the different uh, pieces that it can do and what it's able to uh, export. So take a look, give you an idea here. These are a lot of the formats uh, that you can see where I have some of the different pieces that you can load, but you'll notice you'll see there's quite a bit in here that you can load. You know, obviously you have your OBJ and we can load FBX and quite a few others. So um, you can definitely take a look and see what you think. And of course, there's GLTF. So while we wait for uh, Unreal to kind of give us that first time startup, which is very similar between uh, engines, you know, like how O3D, we have our asset processor that starts up. Uh, Unreal has the same thing where they're, you know, kind of preparing everything along ahead of time. Uh, in case you're curious, you know, what kind of system that I'm running this on. Uh, basically, we're sitting on a Intel 13900KF. So, you know, for some people that are think, oh, well, you know, my machine's going to slow me down. Depends on the engine that you use. I mean, the reality is that even Unreal, Unity, O3D, they're all going to pay you at 100% for a little bit getting their first projects uh, put together. And this is just another example of it. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the feed for a little bit until this is done, and we'll come right back. Okay, so now that we have the level in uh, loaded, we can go ahead and take a look. There's a lot of stuff happening here uh, in this level, as you can see. Pretty, uh, pretty cool, pretty vast. So we have a lot of assets to choose from. Uh, in this case, let's go ahead and uh, kind of grab a statue. So we're going to go here. And what we do is we basically select the object. So we have this already selected. And we can go File, and we can say Export Selected. And so I have a folder here I created, kind of my temporary placement called UE5, and I'm going to call this statue 01 because that's what it was called. Uh, we'll go ahead and save it. Uh, we've got a bunch of pieces here. If you want to have all this information you do, if you want the collision mesh to come along with it, you can. It will incorporate it. I'm going to leave it out in this case uh, just to keep things rather simple. Uh, you can change the format up if you want to move it more modern. It's up to you. It's going to look the same at the end of the day. Uh, we'll go ahead and export it. So what happens is I have this uh, statue 01 FBX uh, that's been exported. So what we'll do is we'll kind of pull up O3DE for a moment here uh, by switching this over. There we go. So here's our O3DE editor. And then, of course, I had the uh, file itself where I was saving it. So we can pull that. Uh, we get Unreal out of the way. And if you remember, we have this folder that it was produced earlier uh, for this sample here. So what I'll do is I have the project video sample. We have our assets. And if you remember, I told you before that we have this assets here that's uh, part of the project. You can still right click, open on Explorer. Um, when you open it up, it's going to open up a new folder for you, which in case that's what this is. If you look, they're identical. <clears throat> so I'll create one, just call it, I don't know, UE5, right? And so if you remember, I have that other asset uh, that was stored over there earlier that I created, which was the statue 01 FBX that I just exported from Unreal. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of copy this over here. 
And if you watch down here, when I click on assets, you notice we have a UE5 and we have a statue 01 FBX. So if I pull this statue 01 and we place it here, uh, you'll notice it's kind of way out in La La Land uh, is where it put it because it kind of took the relative uh, location of where it is. Very easy to fix. Uh, just go to the object itself, take the transform and just zero it out. And then take the other one here and zero it out. And there you go. That's what we're looking for. Something a little bit better. Uh, if you want to get it all true to itself, you can also zero that out. And there you go. Right? So, uh, now that we have this object, uh, everything's pretty cool. It imported it right out of Unreal. It looks good, but it doesn't have a texture. Uh, if you remember before, I mentioned that to bring a texture in, we want to add a material component because it's whatever is internal. So we'll add a material component, and you'll notice that it knows what the name of the textures are, uh, but they're still internal, so we have to generate that. So we're going to generate one. It's going to create two material files, and when we hit OK, you'll notice that we have two new material files that have been generated here. And these material files, everything in O3DE is in text. It's all JSON, so you don't have to worry about weird binary formats. And this is where you'll find all the parameters for the material. Now, in this case, I can open the material editor. And what it'll do is it'll come up. It'll bring this and show this object and the material. The problem is that it actually did have a material in Unreal, and we want that material. So we're going to go back over to Unreal again, uh, where we still have this object here. The piece that we want here is the texture. So you'll go down to where we have the static mesh, and you'll see we have the mesh here, and we have the materials uh, that are involved. Now, mind you, there can be a, there can be much more complex than this, and I'm not going to get into that. Even though you can do part of it, um, I'll record another session that'll explain how you can kind of translate some of the material graph from O3D with uh, Unreal's uh, type of uh, material builder as well. But for starters, what we want to do here is uh, we want to go to this in the content browser. So we know there's this uh, material. We can click on it, and we see that we have a material instance uh, that's in here. And so what we can do is basically just double click on it. And when you double click, it's going to bring up this window here for you. And so because we have this window, there's a few cool things that we can do with it. Uh, for one, let me see if I can shrink it down a little bit. And so I have the object here, and I have the actual diffuse and the normal textures that belong to this. So I can basically click on here and say browse to it, and you'll see it's in blue. Uh, we know this is a diffuse texture, so you can right click and you can export this thing. And so what we'll do is we'll do a asset actions, and we can export. And if you notice, I have my UE5. This is TU statue 1D for diffuse. Save it. And do the same thing here with the normal, right-click, asset, export. That's the normal. Save it. So we do the same thing for the MI pool, too. We double-click on it. Notice we have a diffuse and a normal. But you'll see there's also some other details about this that may be important to you when we go to kind of uh, move this out. So again, I'm going to go to here. I'm going to click on it. We see T2 pool D. Uh, and in this case, I, have the, I actually have the normal, too. So uh, if I want to, I can actually bulk export uh, those two objects and just select the folder. And that'll allow me to kind of go through and pick up the rest of what I had. So now usually what will happen when you bulk export it, though, it tends to put it into a path. So if you don't want to do that, don't do that. Uh, you know, just do them independently. But if you do them together, it's pretty easy. You can go back, find them, and just paste them. So there's the pool. There's the statue uh, textures that we knew in O3D want. And there's a few details that we may want to kind of pay attention to. There's a diffuse color. There's some roughness, some spec. And these are pretty interesting because we can translate them, uh, which is kind of what we want to do. If there's any other parameters in here that you want to take into account, or if you want to look at the shaders, it's not really for this video, but understand that it is, uh, it is here where you can do something about it. So you'll see that we have kind of roughness and inspect. So I'm going to kind of put this aside. I'm going to move Unreal out of the way. I'm going to go back into O3D because now we have these files um, that are here. Same thing as before. Uh, we're going to copy them into place. So we'll go back into the assets, into the UE5 folder, and we're going to paste these textures in here. Uh, the asset processor itself is going to work on them, get them done. They're already done because they're pretty small. So what I can do now is I can go into the material editor here. And when I open this material editor, 
the cool part about this is that I can now tell it, hey, I have a material and I need it to actually do that. So uh, what I'll do here is I've got obviously my texture from my base color, uh, which is my diffuse. So I know this is supposed to be uh, what's called pool. So I know I want pool and D being diffuse. And then I also have a normal that's here. So I want to hit the texture. And I know it's pool. So I will also tell it I want the normal. And that's going to assign both of those against that. And so that's kind of my material TP uh, D. Now, if you get some of this here, it's where it's actually split the channel. Um, it basically saved it as uh, Kind of interesting format of what it does. I've seen this before where it kind of changes it and it put it into a single channel is what it did. Um, you can modify this so that it actually is specific to a channel by kind of editing the uh, settings on this. Right now we know that it's a displacement um, but we may want to change this and just say, uh, excuse me, it says displacement but we really want uh, albedo. And so even though it was underscore D, it thought it was displacement. We change it to an albedo, close it. And then if we look in our uh, material editor and we go back into it, we should be able to see that this file has at least been read correctly. Uh, I think it's running in the background. OK. So if you see here, it's already changed it. Uh, it's back to being gray, what it was supposed to be. So that's pretty good. Um, a lot of times, there are standard format naming that you can use in O3D that will give it hints as to what it is. Um, I would say in most cases, if you don't want to deal with that, don't. It knows this is a normal because it was N, so we're good there. And so now that we have a material that's been done, we can actually save it. And if you notice, the base down here actually just changed uh, to match up what the material is. So we have kind of this post. We'll go ahead and change the top of this as well. Uh, do the same thing. So we knew this was pool 02, uh, 02, there's statue 01. So we're going to create material for this as well just by going here, open the material editor. We're going to change. Uh, we already know that in this case I used D uh, for the texture settings, so it shouldn't have been set as displacement. So I'm going to change it back to an albedo, which is what it should have been. It should have been. Uh, if I remove the underscore D, then it'll just interpret it as to whatever. You can change a lot of information about textures in here, by the way. You can change all the different types of what it is, but you can also tell it to be, you know, 32, 16. This comes in really handy later on when you're trying to specify um, multi-channel for splat maps and things like that. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right, back to where we were here. So we've got this material, we have the statue one material that we're looking at, and so we want to change these uh, again. So we will go into the texture, and we know this is called statue. So uh, here is the diffuse texture, and then we want to go into the normal, which I believe it had here, uh, statue, normal, tell it that we've got this kind of put together, and you can see kind of on the face here, it has that little kind of fleck look on it where it's kind of changed it around. So we know the material is correct as to what it should be. Uh, we'll go ahead and save this, move this out of the way so you can see the effect when we actually save it. File, save, and there we go. See? Now it's textured, it's got what it's supposed to be, it's got the normal set right, it's the way we expected it. Um, it's got the little flex and changes in it. So this is how you can bring the texture over. Now, if you remember, I brought up in Unreal earlier that they had a few parameters that we could have taken advantage of and that we should. Um, so we're going to do that. So what we'll do is we're going to go back over to Unreal. Um, we're going to go to City Park. And we're just going to take a look at what were the values that were here. So this was for pool. This was for statue. So we had a metallic at 0.742857. So let's kind of throw some of these values in here and see if we can make the material look a little more accurate as to where it should be. And so for a metallic, it said this was actually supposed to be way more metallic, so we'll move this to 0.742857. Uh, roughness, it had a value of 0.5, well in this case 553, which is pretty good. Specular had zero, um, so it expected it to look like that. And let's see, it said the UV tiling was set for four, so I guess if you wanted to do the, UV, the tiling on it, uh, you could and kind of change that around, but it looks like this is the predominant 
number of material things. And so we'll go ahead and save that as the material, since we want it to be as accurate as possible. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to go back over to the pool material. And I want to change this as well. Um, so it has a kind of its own diffuse color, which we can change the base diffuse color of this to what we want. So 0 0.73, 0 0.56688, 0 0.453289. Um, that's the actual color that they said it was supposed to be. And so we're kind of taking advantage of that. Uh, let's go back to the material editor. So, and then the other piece that we're going to want to do here is we want to uh, use the roughness and specular on this. So roughness was 0.1, not very rough. So you notice it shines up nice and specular was supposed to be 0.6. So now when we save it, and we go back to O3D, uh, these objects start to kind of change. Um, you know, they become a little more shinier. You can see this will start to reflect off some of the ground of what's supposed to be here. So now when we save it, uh, we will be able to kind of take a look at the difference of effects on what it looked like uh, within this here. So we have the editor here now. You'll notice, you know, this kind of lit up a little more, it'll be a little more reflective, uh, kind of showing off the materials. Now the top here was a bit dark, um, and one of the things to pay attention to is how the material is actually interpreted between Unreal and O3D. And in some cases, you just have to look at how the base color is applied. So if I go to the statue here, you'll see it's actually very dark um, because it's on multiply. But if I move it over to, say, Lerp, uh, and I save it, you'll see that it lightens it up quite a bit. Now the other option is here that you can actually tell to use the forward pass IBL specular. And when you choose that, you'll find out that it's much truer uh, to what we actually wanted it to look like. So here's our object here. And as you can see, this is what we were looking for. So this is how you import something uh, from Unreal into O3D. You know, you have enough adjustments of what you can do. So one of the tricks that you can do when you're adjusting the materials and you're trying to get it to look a little more brighter, uh, it looks a little bit too dark to you, what you can do actually is you can turn around and you can go into the global sky here. And you'll notice that the, uh, the lighting here is actually set for a zero for this. You can raise this up a little bit, bring it up to maybe two, two and some change. And you'll see this gets to be a lot more to what you'd seen before uh, overall. So there's a few different things that you want to look at on how you're changing the lighting, how you're changing the environment uh, to match what's best. It's a matter of kind of making tweaks and changes. Uh, this is only kind of the tip of the iceberg. There is a whole entire system, which is called a material graph, uh, that you can actually build entire uh, shaders and, and pieces from. But uh, this should at least get you started for a couple of ways to bring assets into O3D.